The government's prevarication amounts to nothing less than deliberate and inexcusable defiance of the rule of law. I do hope that whichever party comes into power after May the 6th will put this matter as a real priority. Late into the night on the 7th of April and the top lawmakers in England are furious. Because frankly it is a disgrace that he's gone on for six years. And what's got them so angry? The fact that the UK is breaking human rights law by banning tens of thousands of convicted prisoners from voting in this week's general election. It puts the UK at odds with the European laws it signed up to, and it's all the result of a long campaign by one of the country's most prolific legal campaigners. Look at out the prison bars and the world outside. You know, and terrified where I was. I thought I'd entered a lawless land. Meet John Hurst. From his small house in Hull on the east coast of England, he's launched countless legal cases against the government. Well over a hundred, I lost track of a hundred. And he's won them all. Whoa! <laughs> it does, it, it, it's just that the first time I remember, uh, and I was with the solicitor, and uh, this was the first case we'd actually taken was for lost property, you know, where prison officers or other prisoners were stealing your property and you couldn't get it back. So I decided to challenge that and actually won uh, right on the court steps. And the solicitor, when he told me, he said, oh, they've backed down and you've won your case. And I went like that. And he jumped back thinking I was about to hit him. But I've been keeping it in for so long that suddenly, yes, You've got the Secretary of State for the Home Department. You've got the top man and you were beating him like that. You know, you've made him eat humble pie. It is great, honestly. John never uh, went to law school and has no letters after his name. His legal knowledge he taught himself while serving 30 years for manslaughter. The Prison Reform Trust came out with Prison Rules, a working guide. I could read six books a day. Easily, and I mean reading, I, I don't mean just go through them and miss whole chunks, I read every word in there. You've got your, your way mapped out, you know where you're going, you know what you're going to do. Well I did anyway, they didn't know and it came as a surprise to them. John's biggest fight began more than six years ago when he challenged the British government for not allowing prisoners the vote. The result, the European Court ordered the UK to carry out a proper review into the issue. But six years and nearly two elections later, and John is still no closer to victory. Ministers in, in Europe have said that uh, our government, the UK government, should uh, introduce voting for prisoners prior to next week's general election. Uh, they've said it repeatedly, it just hasn't happened, and it appears that the government has been trying to kick the issue into the long grass so that it doesn't happen before the election. It seems to us to be shameful. It puts the UK into a shrinking group of countries which refuse prisoners the vote. Armenia, Estonia and Bulgaria, to name a few. So why has the British government delayed giving prisoners the vote for so long? The reaction from taxpayers would be one of absolute spitting fury uh, at politicians. People already aren't impressed by the political class. They already aren't impressed by what they see as a human rights agenda that favours the guilty over the innocent. Um, and there will, be, uh, th there will be absolute anger. For that reason, I don't think politicians will do it. And that means the real impact here is that we're going to find that the European Convention of Human Rights and the European Court um, is actually a dog whose bark is a lot worse than its bark. Just weeks before the election, the UK's prison population reached a new record with more than 85,000 men and women behind bars. Despite their crimes, experts believe giving them the vote could stop them re-offending. They come out of prison, feel alienated, get back into bad habits uh, and back into crime. So we see this as one uh, important symbolic way, if you like, of demonstrating that they still do have a stake in society. So what does the government say about all this? Well, it's not something they want to talk about. When we requested an interview, all we got was a short statement saying, a two-stage consultation process on prisoner voting rights took place. The second stage consultation has closed. In the shadow of the Houses of Parliament stands a statue to Emily Pankhurst, who fought for women in Britain to get the vote. Nearly a century later, John Hurst is sure his battle for the country's convicted criminals will go down in history too. Because the whole thing for me was to get out of prison firstly and also change the system. You know, those were my goals. You know, I've got the first one, I've got out of prison. The second one is to change the system. You know, 
uh, not just for benefit of prisoners, but everyone should benefit. And that's got to be a good ideal, I think.